Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Our Kids Play Hockey. We want to let you know that we have once again been honored with a nomination for the Hockey Podcast of the Year via the Sports Podcasting Awards. And all you need to do to help us is go to OurKidsPlayHockey.com and click on the Vote Now button. It asks you a couple questions. You're in and you're out, and you have voted for us for Hockey Podcast of the Year. I want to thank you all for being a wonderful, wonderful audience and helping us get to this stature of hockey podcasting because we've done it as a family, as the hockey friends and families around the world. Thanks so much and enjoy this episode of Our Kids Play Hockey. Hello, hockey friends and families around the world. Welcome to yet another edition on a very cold, not spring day here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I'm Lee Elias, joined as always by my co-host, Christy Cassiano Burns and Mike Benelli, who are both in different parts of New York, where it is also cold. I will have you look if you're watching this video. Mike Benelli in a full jacket today in his office looks like a hockey podcast. Hopefully it sounds like a hockey podcast. Today's topic is something that's going to be pertinent to a lot of you now, and it's going to be hockey camps slash hockey clinics what do you do what do you take there's so many different versions of them there are there are big expensive overnight camps where they have huge campuses where you can do hockey nonstop all summer and get your kids out of the house or even go with your kids there's also one week clinics at your local skating rink power skating and all those other things what do you choose what do you spend where do you go why do you do it how do you do it lots of questions well the expert panel is here today to answer those questions. And that's what today's show is going to be about. So both of you, first off, welcome back to the show. We're doing really well on episodes here. We've got a lot of <laughs> listeners. I want to thank every one of you that has listened or downloaded or watched this show so far. You really are uh, giving us a reason to get back here every week to do this. Uh, so thank you for that. So let's let's first turn to Mike Benelli. Mike, obviously you're going to be an expert on knowing what to do. Uh, I always looked at the off season as a time to improve. If you're going to play hockey, it's a time to improve on skill sets that maybe you need some advancement on, but how do you approach the summer? I'm considering you're probably behind a lot of these camps and clinics. Yeah. So right now, you know, we're in full summer, summer mode of trying to put together programming that, you know, is, is, is fun, developmental, informative, educational, you know, I think that for everybody in, in, in different levels, uh, you really have to think about, you know, what is, what is the, objective for your summer development if it's a day camp like a a camp where you know hockey's included in it and maybe there's swimming and outdoor recreation and tennis and everything else and it's more of a day camp then that's one aspect of you know what you what you obviously want to look for in a camp uh most of the players that i'm i'm personally working with now are are you know more in the high performance model of okay what are your deficiencies what would you like to improve on you've got a great shot maybe the camp for shooting is not what you want right you'll get like what even professional players do like a guy like Sidney crosby uh i think uh austin matthews did it this summer that you know you you, sp you specifically look at Sidney crosby well, i want to get better at face-offs i'm that's a, it's a piece of my game that I have to improve so that's you know he went to summer camp you know for professionals and he found a skills instructor that allowed him to develop his you know face-off prowess so i think it all depends on the age uh but basically you want to find a camp that's going to fit the needs uh, of your player uh, for that time, you know, in this uh, quote unquote off season. Right. Even if the need is just to have fun, right? Like, I think that's a big part of this, you know, depending on how serious you are about the game, we've done multiple episodes about, you know, in the off season, you might even want to try playing other sports, uh, but you, you really have to gauge it. You don't want to burn a kid out in the summer. Now, if your kid wants to go and is raring to go to a hockey camp, then these are great conversations to have. And I agree with you, Mike, you know, when I was in the off season, especially in my, my late teens, I wanted to get better at something. And, and, you know, the shooting camps were sometimes very inciting, I'm sorry, exciting or enticing. But if I needed to work on something else, I really needed to have a thought about that. Like, you know, I always think about power skating, right? Like no one really wants to go to power skating. It's exhausting. It's hard work. There's rarely any pucks. The instructors typically yell at you and they can all do edge work that you can't do. Right. So it's, it's not the most enticing, thing, but I'll tell you what, I never went to a power skating clinic where I didn't come out better than when I went in. And those are typically just a few weeks long. Now, let me throw it to you, Christy, because um, on the parent end of this conversation, I'm sure you've done many of these. Again, I, as a parent, I have not yet. I've only really been in youth hockey for a year with my son. Uh, you've gone through it twice with two different kids. So you're not in it. You've been through it. You've spent the money. What do you think about camps, clinics, and everything in between? All right. Well, we always like to hit the off button in the off season and give our kids a break and let them experience other sports, swimming, lacrosse, baseball. But inevitably, 
they also want to do a camp, a, a, something light, something fun with their friends, especially when they're, they're in the younger years. Right. And we would let them do usually local camps for a week. Um, that being said, um, you, you do have to do your research on it. And I've got a couple of buyer beware stories, which I'm going to share in a few minutes. Not right now, because oh. <laughs> my <laughs> blood's going to boil and I don't want to boil it this early in the podcast. So let's just say before you sign your kids up for something, make sure they want to do it. I mean, if they're eager to do it, their friends are doing it. It's in your budget. Find out if right. you can afford this camp. And there if are affordable can't... camps out there, by the way. I, I do yeah. Want to, I, I'm, not, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but there are very affordable hockey camps out there. Uh, we will talk about this again in a minute, too. The amount of money you spend does not always equal quality. But we will get back to that. Go ahead, Christy. Bingo. Right. Exactly what I was going to say. Oh, well, I, can, but I cut you off for no reason. I feel bad about it. Jeez. Also, no, 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 this is fun. We all jump in and I don't mind that at all. I love when we collaborate, but don't be ashamed or embarrassed if you can't afford the camp. Trust me, your kid is not going to fall behind at age eight if right. you don't sign him up for the camp and all of his friends are doing it. Do not feel guilty. Get that out of your mind. Also, do some homework on it. Find out from other parents if it's worth your investment. You know, did your kid get a, ask a parent who's been through it. Did your kid get a lot out of this camp? Are they just hiring a bunch of local college kids with no discipline and no instruction? Are they just taking your money? Because uh, there are a lot of camps that will do that. You know, they look enticing. And then when you finally get through a week, you look back and say, there was no structure. There was no discipline. There was no one-on-one. -on -one. I got apps. My kids got, had fun, but they didn't really get anything out of that camp. Find out what the player coach ratio is. Um, it's fine if they have a whole bunch of kids for group skills like um, drills and uh, you know uh, strategies on the ice to have a big group, but you do want some individual instruction as well. And I always like the eight kid per one coach ratio. Mike, is that about a fair assessment? About eight players to one coach for some personal individual instruction and some feedback. Yeah, it depends on the camp you're going to, right? If you're going to a, a, a conditioning program, you know, where it's a little different, where it's more just you're drilling kids. But I think Christy brings up great points, not only about cost, but the hidden like enticement of six hours of ice a day. Well, you don't need six. Actually, yeah. it's at six hours. You're probably doing more harm than good. I mean, there, there's always a matter. I know a lot of the camps and, and the programs that I guide now, uh, they're really more of these small little bites like that. They're not nine hours out of the day, unless it's a day camp where there's a lot of other things going on. But I think when you look at, you know, when, when, when coaches are saying, well, in six hours, I'm going to make you a hockey player. You can't get a year's development in, in a week. And, you know, I think you got to be careful of the amount of hours you're on the ice um, compared to what you're getting while you're on the ice. I'd rather have 50 minutes on the ice with real, like that, that ratio of one to five, one to eight and real instruction then a camp that just drills the kids from red line to blue line and circle drills, you know, has a cup of coffee and watches the kids have lunch and goes home. So I think it's right. just finding out what you want. And I think, you know, and, and to your point also about, you know, eight, nine, 10, any age, listen, there's, there's hundreds and hundreds of examples of teenagers taking the summer off, being a lifeguard, being a, you know, going and getting a job as a CIT, be, getting life skills um, and still, right you know, not have to go to this intense hockey school, hockey performance development program uh, in the off, you know, the off months of your on ice hockey. Right. Remember, your kids are not signing up for an NHL contract. It's a camp. It's a clinic. Look for the fun factor, too, especially when they're little. Um, off ice is really um, a great opportunity for the kids to have fun. Um, so look for a camp that also offers those off ice opportunities, whether it's, you know, going out in the field and kicking around a soccer ball or doing some fun drills outside, getting some fresh air and some sunshine. I always liked a camp that blended the off ice as well as the on ice. You don't want them in an ice rink on a summer day for six right. hours. Right. It's yeah. good to mix it up. Yeah. The, the ice rink is the escape from the heat, not, not the solution. Yeah. Right. Uh, you know, a few things based on what you, you both said, you know, one of the things that's underestimated about the summertime, and I'm actually an example of someone who who probably didn't do this right, is the summertime is in, 
incredibly important for the younger age kids, probably under 12, I'm talking now, to, to learn social skills, right? You're out of your normal school environment with the same kids that you see every day. And you can be thrusted into an environment where you're meeting kids from all over the place that you don't know. And I didn't do that probably enough as a kid. And I, I, I'm not socially awkward. I mean, I'm a host of a podcast, so I obviously know how to speak. Right. But I, I, I tell you what, I used to get anxiety around new people when I was younger because I wasn't used to that situation, uh, even though I was going to a new hockey team every year. Um, I probably could have used a little more exposure um, than being kind of somewhat the hockey loner that I was and just practicing all the time. Now, again, I don't regret any of that. You know, you know that, that's what I needed to do to, to get to where I've gotten today. But looking back, I'm just kind of aware of that. Like, you know, there's some skill sets there outside hockey I probably had to sacrifice um, to continue in the game. Now, with that said, uh, I want to go back to another point you both made that, you know, Mike, you had said, you know, you're not going to get a year's worth of instruction in a week or six weeks. Um, and I think that's a great point. I, I think that sometimes people go into these camps with the wrong perspective, which is, well, when you come out, you better know this, this, and this, or I didn't, I wasted my money. Here's the deal. And Mike, I want you to comment on this specifically as a coach. Um, uh, you know, if you go to a camp, let's just make it a six week camp or six, a six session camp, right? If you learn one major thing from that, you have succeeded, right? If you get one new skill set out of that camp, you've succeeded in my mind, right? It's very hard to learn and master a skill set of any type over years. So if you go into a power skating camp and you couldn't use your left inside edge and now you can, or if you want to go younger, you couldn't stop on the left side and now you can, or you couldn't kick a puck down the ice with both your feet. And now you can. That's, that's a win. That's a win. If you have gotten just one thing, if you get more than one thing, that's bonus. Mike, you agree with that? Yeah. I mean, it, it is, it is important to come away with a skill learned and, and, and a, you know, and, and somewhere in the game that it's transferable. Right. And I think that's so important for, I use example, you know, with my programming that if I go to a week of power skating, you know, and again, I hate the term power skating. Cause I just think it's, I think we well, all need to get, we, I, think we all, I think we all need to get into the mode that learning how to properly skate should be a foundation that we all do. Yes. Like, so where the power comes from in power skating, if you actually want to improve your power skating, then go and join a speed and agility right. and strength program, get off the ice. You don't even need the ice, but let's go back to hockey camps. If you're thinking about what am I doing in a hockey school, that's going to improve my game then there's two aspects. I, and I look at this, you know, let's go back to the skating technique. If I'm a, if I go to a week of power skating camp uh, in June, and then I don't maintain that somehow throughout the summer, then that you, you've, you often lose. And, and hockey is so, it, it, like, I know it's like riding a bike, but, and, and you will catch up. There's no doubt about it. But, but the, the learning that muscle memory is so important to maintain right. it. So right. when you pick the type of camp you pick, if you got to pick a shooting camp in June, that's great because what you, you could do that in the driveway all right. summer. You know, you right. could find a way to shoot all summer and use those same reinforcement techniques. But I, the example I use is okay. I go to a week of uh, hockey school, six hundred dollars. I spend it on a great power skating coach. My son, daughter gets out of there. They're really progressive, and then they get to the season, right? And then they have, and that, that's a really good coach. And then they have knucklehead me who doesn't know how to teach skating, does, does red line, blue line drills for 20 minutes at the end of practice and bag skates the kids. And, but I have them for 27 weeks. This guy had them, this person had them for one week. Who's going to win the development race? Right. Me, unfortunately. I'm going to develop them improperly for don't, 25 don't, you weeks. You don't have to beat yourself up. You can use Not another me. example. I don't use, <laughs> I, I, I use Lee. If I went to Coach Lee, X. If yeah. I went to Coach let's call him lee yeah, right? oh great that's I a like great him. name yeah <laughs> l-e-i-g-h on this one right <laughs> so, so so what i'm just saying you just have to be careful about when you pick the camp who you're picking it with and then more importantly i think if you're going to put outside the day camps and outside the fun camp which again you go to minnesota hockey schools and you'd be out in the you know doing paddle boarding right. and, Heart, and, heartland you know, hockey this, yeah heartland right. hockey I mean, those are like right. i used to work with international hockey schools in minnesota it's the greatest right experience even for it's a Disneyland Let, let's so you bring it up a good point I was actually bringing this up later in the show but right, like, so, yeah but Heart, they, Heart, Heartland Hockey just real quick which is in a it's a campus I mean it's, it's legit right. a campus right. and I, I've said it is the Disneyland of hockey camps now that that means everything that comes with Disneyland it's expensive but you're probably going to get what you're paying for but that campus has an in an on-campus rink an on-campus <laughs> shooting area dogs may be allowed you don't know 
All right. Um, you know, it, it, it's okay. It's okay. That's the, that's the beauty of recording uh, during this time period. Um, they have a big lake with balloons and things you can bounce off. I mean, it's got everything, right? There's a dining hall. I mean, that, that, to me, that's, that's probably the top notch of like the most well-rounded thing, but it's expensive, right? Um, and it's an overnight camp. And then, like you said, Mike, you, there's a hundred dollar off ice camps too. So sorry, continue. But I wanted to, I wanted to say that. Cause like, I want people to realize how high this goes. Like that is a legit business that runs like Disneyland. And it is, it, it, you should also treat it like Disneyland. It's not something you should probably be doing like six times a year right it's like i know and i love i love the idea of diversity of that and i also like the idea that you could do different things with your kids at different different times of their career right you don't have to go right. to the same hockey school every summer uh, christy brought her her whole contingent to to norway right for one year it wasn't just about hockey i mean hockey i mean it turned out for her daughter wasn't even part of it because <laughs> because because right. she was hurt so i mean i think it turns out to be it's a, it's it's if you want to put your kids in a different situation socially, meet new people, learn new cultures, learn new parts of the, the region, you know, going to your, and not, not that I'm not supporting your local, you know, hockey rink and camp structure, but to go to a whole different region and make it part of, uh, you know, you got to remember too, you're, you know, like I, uh, for us, like if I have my son who's into the hockey and my other son is not, I need to make sure if we're going to go on a family thing somewhere and he's going to go to hockey school, that there's other things around us too. That, that the other kids can do and the parents can do, you know, what are you gonna do? Sit around and watch, you know, hockey camp all day. So you got, you know, just being aware of what time of year, what time of their career, what, how old they are, and then trying to figure out, you know, what does, you know, what does my son or daughter want, you know, out of this experience? Hopefully fun is always there. Right. Right. And then you got to fix, then you got to find the Disney worlds of, <laughs> of hockey camps and you got to find but you also got to find the blue collar worlds of hockey camps too because maybe there's a there's a lot of you know there's a lot of chances in there to do block drills and, and learn basic fundamental skills that you know i was just talking to a couple of parents about this last week during the hockey season as a coach you don't have a lot of opportunity to fine tune those individual you know deficiencies in a player right you just have to try to work through it in practice yeah your job's the team but right? you can't it's hard but now good coaches, hopefully at the end of the year, and we've talked about this, you know, even in exit interviews are going to give that player the foundation of like, wow, if you could work on these three things, how you catch a puck in your backhand, how you right. pivot, how right. you protect, right. how you cover the net. If you could give them a piece of what you're, what you saw for 25 weeks and then give them that knowledge space to go out with, you know, then you're really, now you're really setting your kids up for success for yourself too, as a coach for next year, for, you know, fixing the, the things that you just didn't have time or, weren't in the capacity to do during the season. Right. And, and Christy, we're going to get to your horror stories in a minute and I'll, <laughs> I'll, try, I'll try and bounce back with some good stories, but you know, Mike, you know, there's a great analogy that I wanted to share with you and, and everybody. I believe Yamir Yager said this, but it was, a, it doesn't matter. A, a very prominent NHL player said this and uh, I'll never, I never forgot. They said, look, it's when you're building skill sets, it's like you have a toolbox and you're putting tools in the toolbox. And he yeah. goes, you can have all these tools that you don't really need, but if you don't have a hammer and a screwdriver, and a wrench, which is skating, shooting, passing, he goes, doesn't matter. You're, you're not going to be that good. So he's like, you want to have the best hammer because you use that tool the most. You want to have the best wrench. Um, and, you know, I, I really took that. He goes, and then once you get those down, you, you want to start bringing as many tools into the toolbox as possible. But he goes, you have to know what you need, right? When you're, when you're doing a project, you typically don't need 400 tools. You need three to five, right? So you better make sure you have those. The other tools are for fine tuning, right? I, I always love that analogy. And like you said, like something as simple, a totally underestimated skill. You just said this, catching a puck on your backhand. I am always amazed. You, actually, I'll tell our audience this, and I'll tell you both this. You would be shocked at higher levels how many people do not know how to do that properly. All right? You'd be shocked, right? Because it's never it's taught. It's infuriating to me that, that players can't catch pucks anywhere in their vicinity. Right, right. You know, without right. – Without, you know, and that's uh, Martin St. Louis talks about it a lot. I know when I, when I, when I'm around him, it's just the ability that you, that, that you're always catching bad passes at the yeah, highest level. Great players catch bad passes. That's, that's, there the is deal. no bad pass. There's no such right. thing. Right. It's just find a way. Catch find it. a way. And then uh, there's yeah. this, this little flip thing. I don't know what that is, but you know, there's, there's, there's <laughs> the kids just don't like you see it, but that's, but that's again, something muscle memory that right. a good off season you can fix and then that player now opens themselves up to all this so, other stuff in the uh, toolbox. I, I will I will tease this. And then, Christy, I want to hear your horror stories. But, look, I learned to catch a puck in a 360 direction around my body on one drill. 
And it was taught to me by a professional coach in the summertime, believe it or not, who was, he did one drill and he taught me how to catch a pass in every potential situation. And all we did was when I, when I had training with this man, we did the same three or four drills every single week until I mastered them or got proficient enough to add another drill. So we didn't do 50 different drills every week. We did them until I got one and then we removed that and bring another one in. I progressed more with that training than at any other time in my entire life. Right. Yeah. It was extremely simple. Right. It just goes to show you don't need advanced super techniques. I, 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 I always say this, look, there is a place in the game for being able to flip the puck up in the air, spin your stick 17 times and catch it. There is obviously a skill set there. I, I don't want to insult it. Too many people say that that's worthless. You'll never do it in a game. You know, we're seeing people do crazy stuff in games. That's just not where I would start and focus my time. That's all I'm trying to say. That That's the extracurricular stuff you do on your own. That's not something you need to be a good player. All right. Because, you know, most of those guys that do that on social media don't really play. Right. Not so, only like, that. I would, I, would, I would venture to say that if you're able to do that and your hand-eye coordination is good enough to do that and you're able to have the, have the, uh, the, the confidence to try those type of things, you probably are catching a puck in your backhand pretty well anyway. Like, so, I hope so. <laughs> so, so, so. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, I mean, or you should be in color guard at your school. Right, right? unless like you're just a trickster. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Yeah, get, give yeah. the kid a baton and let him go. But I think, I think it's just a matter of you know, knowing what tools are not in your toolbox and then not just flossing by them. But actually, you know, that's the time you have hour, you know, look at the hours you have in the summer at right. home and, and with the camp. So, th- so in, in closing on me, on just on this little piece, go to summer camp, fine tune your pieces, right. And then find a way in the season or during that off season to then incorporate that into your normal training right. and repeat, 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 repeat. And that's what the best players in the world do. I'm going to let Christy bring us down into the depths. Yeah, yeah, please. Don't of, kill of, me. Of hey, don't mention, here. hey, and listen, we'll, we'll and don't bring mention, it back up. And don't mention my camp. <laughs> right. <laughs> Christy, <laughs> time out, though. mention it I first. Love, I love that you guys said that flip thing because, I mean, you guys are like these high level coaches. You called it that flip thing because yeah. that's like something I would say. Yay! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's nothing, you know, if, if it was, I don't know what it is. I can't, I can't, if it was valuable, it would have a name. That's that's what I'm trying to say. I mean, I, I, I'm, look, gonna, I'm gonna look it up between podcasts, but I, I don't know what the heck that thing is. I don't. I, I, I want to say this. I, look, I I I'm I'm actually pretty adamant. I don't want to discourage anyone <laughs> from trying that stuff because, like, look, you should be able to express yourself creatively. What I'm saying is, you can't sacrifice a basic skill set for that at this time, right? Right? Because, like I said, I I know really I do know very high level hockey players that do that on social media. Uh, for, for business reasons, right? It's, it's very attractive to getting people to watch. And, yeah. they'll, you know, I was asking one of them one time, like, why do you do that? Like, you're never going to, you're never going to use that. And he goes, well, you know, it's fun. I'm having fun like, with it. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's fun. It, 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 but but he, he was okay. realistic. He also needs, he also knows he needs to catch the puck with his backhand. So yeah. anyway, Christy, listen, I'm going to let you bring us down. Right. Uh, so I just, I do want to, while we're still on the positive note, Sure. <laughs> um, there was a camp in the summer that my son did. He wanted to improve his stick handling skills. Right. And it was specifically geared towards stick handling. It was the Turcot stick handling yeah, clinic. Yeah, it was camp. excellent because it gave them a nice, the right blend of group instruction so that he could improve, uh, introduce concepts to all the kids in a group setting work on drills and skills, and then split off and did individual one-on-one instructions. And Turcotte was there at the clinic, which was so impressive. He was just a fantastic yeah. well instructor. Known, well-known camp and, in the family. Yeah. The family and done a he, lot of that. they took a videotape of Joey at the end. And um, Mr. Turcotte was there and he said, here's where your son needs to improve. Let me show you the video, what we saw in some of his areas that where he could get better. And boy, didn't his stick handling skills, it, it, he really, some, the light bulb went off right. and uh, I, we, we yeah. saw a huge improvement. So that, that was fun for him and it was a great camp. So there are a lot of really good camps out there. Again, do your research, ask other parents, you know, what they, what their, if their kids got out of it and if it was worth the money. I would say buyer beware if there's a star player attached to the camp. It doesn't mean that star is necessarily going to be there. We fell into the trap. There was a local AHL player who was putting on a camp, hugely popular. All the kids loved him. And he was the tough guy. 
um, the enforcer. So, you know, Joey and his friends all want to do this camp. It was going to be at a local rink, a little pricey when it came to camps, but we thought, okay, you know what? It's only a week. Let's go for it. So we signed him up for it. About a half hour after I signed him up for it, I got a phone call from this player. I'm like, what? Hi, yes. Wow, you're calling me. Yes, I did sign myself. Are you going to be home in an hour? Yeah, I'll come <laughs> over and get the check. Wow. So I immediately wow. told my husband, this star player is coming to our house in an hour. He's going to collect the check. I was like, I'll be right over. Right. <laughs> so I mean, red flag, right? Why would this player want to come and collect the check that day for this camp? Big red flag. So yeah. Mm, yeah. I was not comfortable with that. And I'll tell you what we found out later. So anyway, the kids were so excited. Oh my God, he's coming to our house. And we got pictures <laughs> with him. I write the check, hand it over to him. <laughs> so it turns out <laughs> uh, the, the camp comes. He was there in the beginning, gave a great big speech, signed autographs, and you never saw him again. Oh. And he hired some college kids to run the camp, which was not very disciplined, and they didn't get a lot out of it. And then he showed up again at the end of the week to say, great job, kids, pat everybody on the back. Let's get a group shot. And that right. was it. So it turns out this player was in a lot of financial uh, trouble. And so this was a way of him making money. Um, so we got a week of ice time. We didn't get the one-on-one -on -one that we were expecting with this star. And it was a big disappointment. So be careful when stars attach their names to the client. They may not be there right. every day. Give your kids personal instruction. They may just be there for the beginning and maybe at the end and not there every day. So do your homework before you sign well, on the dotted line. I'll, I'll, I'll can, I just, can I just add one thing to that though? Cause I think that's a great point. Cause I, and I, and I actually, we bring this up a lot with the, the clients that I work with is that there's also the flip side of that, that if you're going to pay a little bit more money for a limited enrollment camp with a true professional, that's going to be with your son or daughter, that time alone, like some of these camps, Turcotte, uh, you know, Skinner, uh, all the, you know, some, uh, uh, Graham Glantz. Townsend, Robbie yeah. Glanz, like there's some real hands-on individuals that can change the course of a player's career based off of that up there, the reason they are who they are is because their ability to find things, Timmy Turk, you know, and shooting, things like that, their ability to find things in a player one-on-one, -on -one, that's why they're getting paid the big bucks, you know, with the NHL club. So on, on that side of it, you know, listen, I guess, you know, if I get no gambling debt, I'll have to run a hockey school for a week, I guess. But at the same time, you know, I think knowing that uh, sometimes you are going to pay uh, a little bit more for that less enrolled camp. But to your point, Christy, make sure you're getting that getting that real instruction from the player from the person who's claiming to be the guru in that particular you know uh, right. skill yeah well, well i got another one well oh, no. i would say we'll all keep right. an eye out so for my... the mike benelli borderline hockey camp if he ever gets in, in <laughs> you'll uh, know you'll know i didn't pay the rent to deck. welcome to borderline <laughs> so my second yeah. fire beware story <laughs> This is when Sophia was starting to get interested in colleges, um, age 15, 16. And you know, you get so many emails from showcases and pamphlets and advertising about this showcase, that showcase, if your kid wants to play college, go to this camp because we're gonna have college uh, and college uh, hockey coaches there where they can do one-on-one -on -one with their kids, get them on the radar. And we looked at a few of them and one in particular attracted us because two college coaches were there, um, claim were, were advertised to be there. Um, and we thought this would be a great opportunity for Sophia not to only tour the colleges, which were nearby, but also meet the college coaches and at least get them on the radar. Let's, let's see if this is something that, you know, maybe we can develop a relationship with these coaches. So we show up and um, we were pretty disappointed because <clears throat> when we got there, the two coaches who she was interested in weren't there. And when she got out on the ice, it was mostly prep school girls. And even though they had the nondescript pennies on, 
the coaches seemed to cater to the prep school girls. And Sophia felt that. Um, they would talk to the prep school girls. They kind of, they were, Sophia was one of three girls who weren't, wasn't in prep school. And they kind of ignored our three girls. And they were always last to be called on. There was no conversations with them. And I asked Sophia, how did they know? Because you're all wearing pennies, all the same pennies. She goes, well, the prep school girls had stickers on their helmets. Right. So they know, oh, you're from that school. Oh, how's this coach? Blah, blah, blah. So she felt left out. And at the end of the day, when I saw that the two coaches who were advertised to be there weren't there, I went to the instructor, the director of the clinic, the one who pulled it all together. And I said, hey, where's coach A and where's coach B? And he said, oh, well, they couldn't make it. There was a conflict. And I said, you said they were going to be here. It's here's the pamphlet. Here's their names. Yeah, they they couldn't make it. I'm sorry. Um, and the other piece of the puzzle that we were really interested in is they advertised there would be a, a an education section for parents to meet with all the college coaches and learn about the whole recruitment process and ask questions about college hockey. And that wasn't on the schedule either. Well, I happened to know one of the coaches advertised to be there was an assistant coach at Syracuse University. And I was curious as to why she wasn't there either. So I called her up and I said, hey, Ali, <laughs> you were advertised to be at this clinic and you're not here. Why aren't you here? She said, I told them back in January that I was not going. What do you mean I'm advertised to be there? I sent her the pamphlet. She was floored because her picture, her name was on this pamphlet advertising that she would be there. And she had told them back in January before that pamphlet went out that she didn't like the way the clinic was run. She didn't want her name attached to it anymore. She was angry. She called up this director and said, you had no right to do that. That's very misleading. That's false advertising. Yeah. So I had this illegal. piece of information. Yeah. Right. So I went up to this guy and I said, you said Allie was going to be there. You said these two coaches and they're not here. That's the reason why we came. And he goes, oh, I'm sorry. It was a miscommunication. I said, wait a minute. You also said that there was going to be a session for parents with all of the college coaches. And I'm looking at the schedule and I don't see it here. He goes, oh, well, no one else is interested in it, so we're not going to have it. I said, what do you mean? He said, there aren't any other parents. Most of them are prep school parents, so they're not interested. So uh, we, we took that off the schedule. And I said, I paid for this session. And you're telling me there aren't any other parents interested? No, nope, you're the only one. <laughs> well, I don't know who you're talking to. I see a group <laughs> of parents in the hall. Love and it. I went to them, 10 parents. I said, hey. Folks, you know, introduced myself. Just curious, was anyone interested in the parent session with the college coaches? Because I'm understanding I'm the only one. And they all said, no, we would love that. We saw it wasn't on the schedule. So we just figured they didn't have time for it. He said, no, apparently no one else but me is interested. And then I got them all riled up. I said, could you all come as a group with me to this, <laughs> to this fellow? And as a group, we went to him and we said, we paid for a session, a parent session with these college coaches, and we would like one. His face, he never thought this would happen. So he was forced to arrange a session with these coaches and all the coaches were great. They actually loved it. They enjoyed right. our company. They loved our questions and I got a lot out of it. So what I'm saying to you that is if things are advertised falsely, demand speak up and don't just be silent and say you paid for this i'm entitled to this and i don't think that clinic is running anymore i think that uh good they, uh, a lot of the coaches were pretty upset with how it was run Christy, and parents too so there's a few things i've learned from your story one is that the jokes on prep schools because your daughter did get to ncaa division one <laughs> So it just goes well, to show I, you. Not to, you can, I mean, prep school's great. I mean, I'm not against prep watch, schools. Well, the, the, I have my, nothing against them. My moral and it's a great that, avenue. My moral it really that. is a great avenue. If, you're, if your right. kid wants that and serious that, 
and don't care about missing the high school experience, which was not right for my my kid. Right. Um, but there, I know a lot of girls in prep schools and absolutely love it, and that's fantastic. Don't, don't get me but, wrong. I, I'm not trying to knock prep schools. Yeah. My well, my point yeah. with that is, if you want something enough, you'll you'll make it happen, right? And your your, your daughter exactly. did that. I went to public school too, I, so I, I'm 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 not against prep schools at all. Uh, outside the funny kind of like high school musical level rivalry that we always have with them in high school, uh, you know, but there's nothing wrong with public school. Um, second thing is, uh, you know, this is just a shout out to anybody running a, running a camp. Uh, you know, if there's a, a journalist or an anchor in the parent group, don't, don't piss them off. They do this for a living. You're gonna, they're going to do investigative journalism and you're going to get out. No, that sounds horrible. I'm not going to lie to you. That sounds horrible. That sounds terrible. Um, I, I, I will, I will follow up with this and I'm glad we're living in a time where if someone were to run something that bad or that other AHL player, uh, it probably wouldn't survive the internet now, uh, in the sense of that, that you, you're only going to get so far before that you're going to be outed for running it horribly. And you do bring up a great overall point, which is make sure you're getting what you're getting. Sometimes these things are really shiny and bright. And like you said, like, I, I I bet you the thing about the AHL player, it wasn't the, the instruction. It was that you were probably devastated for your kids because they were so excited. Um, and that goes back to the moral of the story is like, you want the kids to have fun in the summer. And there's this guy just coming to the house to collect the check, like a bail bondsman, <laughs> right. For himself. Right. It, you know, so, and now, now you can just yeah. take Gimmo right away. Right. So I guess it's even worse. Yeah. Right. Now, uh, I, I do want to say when we were at the, the college uh, recruitment, the showcase, we did make the best of it. We did visit colleges that were sure. nearby. So yeah. we we got a lot out of it. We didn't let them defeat us. We right. had a lot of positive. And I met some great parents, which was fantastic. And I'm still friends with them to this day. Uh, we keep in touch. So, I mean, try to make a negative and turn Absolutely. it into a positive. Well, that's, and that's on you, parts. right? Yeah. Because I, I remember I went to a Can-Am tournament up at Lake Placid one year, and I, I visited several colleges. I, that, that's kind of your area, Christy. You know, I visited several co colleges up there uh, on that trip you know, with my parents. I'll never forget that, you know. But, yeah, going back to the camps, you know, look, uh, there's nothing wrong with star players doing it as long as they're there, like you said. Like, I, I know a lot of star players, especially in the U.K., that run really, really great camps. Um, but it's, it's also well-established and well-known that these individuals run a really good camp. So yeah, I would not blindly invest money into anything you're not sure about. And look, yeah, look, I'll, I'll, you know, and Mike, you can speak to this too. These camps are a major source of revenue for the people running them. Like, I don't want to hide that. So my point is this, if they do a good job, it's totally worth the money, right? I'm not, I'm not knocking that, but you know, for the, anybody running a camp, if it's your source of revenue, you want to, you want to do a good job. Uh, for the kids involved, because you want to get out of it. You know, I, I'll tell you one, like the kind of bang for the buck type thing, like um, like the, the NHL's learn to play program. You get great value out of that in the sense of this, you know, it's about 150 bucks, I think 175 bucks. You get full equipment for your kid. You get six ice sessions and they do advertise that an NHL player will come to uh, one of the sessions, which they do. And like, don't get me wrong. It's a free for all out there. You got a lot of kids who have never played before. But like, okay, I paid 175 bucks. I got all this value. It makes sense. Now, if that was $4,000, I would have been a little upset, right? Because it's not what it's worth. So you, you do have to gauge it, as Christy said, you know? And going back to, again, the kind of the purpose of camps, because th this episode's actually gone longer than we both, I think all of us thought it was going to go. You know, wh wh when I think about what worked for me, again, when I was younger, uh, you know, I was excited to go, but I did... Uh, singular skill camps, power skating, or Mike, you know, as you said, probably not the best name for it, but that was, that was really influential to me. You know, I really learned lots of skill sets that I didn't know, or, you know, power shooting or power, power stick handling. You know, I liked the, the clinics that were very focused because that is really how you build a skill. Right. I also liked things where it was all well rounded and I could just have fun, but those were different to me. Right. If I was going to a skills clinic, it was to develop a skill. If I was going to a camp, it was to go to camp. Right. So a couple of stories on my end, you know, there was a camp out here when I was a kid um, that basically the way they, I, I won't say the name of the camp. I don't think it's still around, but they basically brought in pro athletes from every major sport and they would be there. They, they, some of them were better than others at coaching, but they would be there. And they did show up, right. Cause they paid them a lot of money. And I was doing the hockey um, sport. You could pick two sports and hockey was one of mine. And, you know, I did it for the first half. Cause there was kind of like semesters at this camp. 
you know, I really just wasn't feeling it that summer. Like I didn't really enjoy the drills. Um, the, 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 the pro players that were there were kind of boring. I don't know how else to say that. That, that shouldn't shock anybody. Some of these NHL players are pretty boring and it just wasn't fun. So, you know, I told my mom and dad, say, Hey, can I switch sports for the summer? And they let me, and I ended up playing baseball. And I think one of them was inline skating. I did golf for a while, but I got to try all these other sports. Turned out I was actually a pretty good baseball player. I had no idea. You know what I mean? Um, and it was okay. You know, I didn't lose anything that summer by not doing the hockey camp. Um, and I was exposed to other sports. That was a win for me. You know what I mean? And it was just completely because I just didn't feel like skating uh, at that camp. I still skated a lot that summer. Um, I can tell you this too, that when I became more of an advanced player, the best coaches I had, I said this before, were very good about teaching me a singular skill. I did say I would divulge this drill about catching pucks because you think it's a complicated kind of thing to learn and it's not. So, you know, by, by the way, I'll just say this, the trick to catching a puck on your backhand is just to know kind of the fulcrum of the heel of your stick. If, you, if the puck hits the heel of your stick, forehand or backhand, it's going to stop. And that, that's one way to get the puck on your backhand. Mike, you know that well. It's amazing to me how many players don't know that. Just if you let it hit the heel, you're going to have control of the puck. I could take a slap shot, if it hits the heel of your stick and you're holding it, it's going to stop. So what this coach, um, his name is Mark, made me do was he had me on a circle. And he said, what I want you to do, and we do this in both directions, is start skating around the circle. And he goes, at the top of the circle, so he's at, you know, he's at the bottom of it. At the top of the circle, I'm going to make passes to you. Some of them will be good. Some of them will be bad, but it's going to be on your forehand, in your skates, and behind you. And he said, this is how you catch it on your backhand. This is how you catch it in your skates and kick it up to your feet. And this is how you catch it behind you and bring it forward while keeping your eyes up so you don't get hit and knowing how to catch it. I must have done a million of these circles that summer, right? But I'll tell you what, the first time I wasn't that good, a couple of weeks in, I was really starting to get it. And the muscle memory built up so much that I, literally I never, still to this day never forgot how to catch a pass. I'm not saying I catch every pass, All right, but I'm saying my, my, my muscle memory is still activated. If it's in my skates, I just react because of one drill that I did over and over again. And I remember when I mastered that, he would add things to it, right? Well, suddenly we're coming into the zone. It's like, I'm going to put it on your backhand. You have to tap it to your forehand and shoot it within, within one second. He developed me perfectly right? He understood the order I needed to learn these skills in, in order to apply them to other skills. So I almost knocked over my water here. That would have been funny, right? Uh, that was influential to me. The other best summer camp, I got to tell you this, because this was, this was just a great story, was during, uh, I, was, I was in college at the time. So it's technically not camp, but uh, I was really fortunate uh, in 2005 during the NHL lockout. I lived in New Jersey, Northern New Jersey. I was in college up there. And most of the devils were still in town at that time. Um, the New Jersey Devils, and this is the, these are cup teams, right? This is Scott Stevens, Jamie Lang and Bruner, Martin Brador, uh, Tommy Albaline. These are all the guys that are winning. And uh, they invited me and two other college players out to train with them in the summer. And I learned more in those seven or eight skates with no instruction <laughs> than I've ever learned at any other time in my life because I was playing with NHL players. And, and the nice part was is that they didn't instruct me, but they taught me. I hope you know what I mean by that. So you know, if they saw I was struggling with something, they would say, hey, do this or try that. Or, you know, you need to transition faster because I remember one time, this, this is a funny story and then I'll shut up. But I remember one time I took a shot on Bordeaux He saved it. And I was kind of just like, oh, I took a shot. You know, like a basketball player holds a shot. And before I even turned the other way, Bordeaux was up and he passed it all the way down the S, which is what he did in, in games. And they were already shooting on the other net. And I was still in the zone. And I remember that was the moment I realized like, dude, you can't, do this. You as soon as the puck's off your stick, you have to be on to the next play, whether it's in the net or not. That that one moment alone transformed my entire game. When I went back to playing, I was the fastest transitional person on the ice. I mean, I was always in the right position after that, right? Uh, so it just goes to show you experience and and understanding where you're at. I was blessed to be in a position I could hang with those guys skating wise. Definitely not stick handling and shooting yet, right? Know where you're at. Know what you need. Know who's going to provide that. Know if you need a break. Know if you just need to have fun. Have those conversations with your kids. And then make it an experience that you're going to enjoy. Right? And look, and as Christy said, actually, look out for that fake crap. That, 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 those are devastating stories to, to all three of us. But to Mike and I as coaches, I mean, it makes our heart drop, especially when you hear the kids are excited about something and the guy's just collecting a check. That's, that's trash. And I'm glad to hear that, 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 that both of those – are no longer probably in session. So Mike, I've been talking for about five minutes. I do want to throw it to you too. Uh, Cause we had to round this episode out, 
right? So I hope everybody's learning something from this. But Mike, why don't you just give us any any additional thoughts or final thoughts you have on camps, clinics, and everything in between? Yeah, who knew you could talk so much about summer camp? But I think uh, two things, <laughs> um, real real quick, it's just about number one is just be aware too in the summer if you're going to go through all this development process make sure you equip your kids the right way. Make sure they have skates that fit the right, you know, don't right. use the stick. Like, Oh, if you just get through the summer with this old stick, right. we'll a new stick. I will. If you're learning how to shoot and you're in shooting camp, you probably want the right stick for that. That's or you don't point. want the, you know, you know, so just think about like the equipment when you're going to buy it. Summer camps are a good time to break in new gear, but it's not the best time to break in stuff that, you know, like, like we used to have kids come uh, from Norway every year. They bring nothing. Right. But we, and they buy everything here. And I said, well, you, 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 you know, on day one, they'd have blisters on their feet because their skates were, you know, they couldn't break them. They couldn't break them in back then. Right. So just think about, you know, how you're buying equipment. But one of the things I really loved about what you just said, and I think it's so important for any of our, any parents that are listening at it with older kids, it is so, and I, and I think, you know, now I'm thinking about, you know, I used to do the Maloney brothers hockey school back in the day. And I was a, a lead instructor and, I, you know, 17, 18, 19 years old. I learned more in the staff skates after those camps. Right. And right. being on the ice with the pros and the college coaches and the prep school coaches that if you can't, if you can't afford, or you don't, don't want to just spend your whole summer with your 19 year old and 17 year old in hockey camps, have them be an instructor in a hockey school. Right. And they'll learn so much a about life, but just the ability to, to, to pick up all those little nuances of being around high level players and high level personnel. And I think even, and, and even more so being around these people that are probably are going to help them in their own careers, getting to know them in the locker room, getting them in the hallway, getting them to know them at lunch. Um, I know when I did Exeter hockey school every summer, it was only as a counselor and as a, as a coach, it was because, you know, those are great, you know, connections I could make for my career. Right. And so don't think about, you know, summer hockey school is not just for nine-year-olds. It's for those 18 year olds too. that can work all summer, right. earn some money, gain some great exposure to get them out of the house get them out of the house and learn something, you know, have them pay their gas bill. But I think it's like, uh, I think it's like a great in their phone bill more probably, but just you know, given an opportunity yeah. to, to, to be around really great people and great instructors uh, and get paid to do it. I, I'm going to say this too, before I throw it to you, Christy, you know, one of the smartest uh, uh, or I should say best things that I ever did. It, it, was, it was smart too, but I don't like to pat myself on the back was I started going to goalie clinics. I started being shooters at goalie clinics on and off the ice. Guess what I learned? I learned how goalies think and I became a probably better scorer than I ever have become going to goalie clinics outside shooting clinics. Right. Right. Yeah. Sh shooting clinics are very important, but when I learned how goalies thought, that's when I started scoring lots of goals. Right. And just by being a shooter. Right. And, I, and they paid me to do it. <laughs> so Christy, let me throw this to you now. Um, I'm sure you have a good story in there too. Yeah. Uh, oh, I do. I do <laughs> a word to the wise for goalie parents as well. There was one clinic that uh, I observed they had given the goalies discounts to be at the clinic. And it was such a huge disappointment for them because they were just looking for goalies to shoot on. Right. And there was no goalie instructor with the camp. So oh. that ended up being a big disappointment for the kids there. and just the parents. There. Yeah. Because all oh, they they just used them just to it was, it was, and it was a checking camp. On. But she didn't tell you it was a checking camp. So they, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. It was a money camp. It was a money grab. Yeah. That's all it was. Yeah. yeah. So you know, goalie parents, che you know, checking, if, if they right? try to right. entice you, like, right. oh, you know, your kid can go here for half the price. Make sure that there's some goalie instruction that goes along with it too, so they're not completely disappointed. Right. You want them to get something out of it as well. Yeah, thanks for the picture. <laughs> So yeah, Christy, I think that's a great point. I think it's a, it's a great way to end the episode is that look, there's a lot of stuff out there. So you got to find what's right for you. Do your research. The internet is a wonderful and horrible place all at the same time, <laughs> but you can find yeah. out anything you want to know, see what other people have said, right? Like yeah. some of the best advice is, Hey, that camp's a really great camp. Someone tell you that, that my kid learned this at that camp uh, or that summer league, that spring league's a great spring league. My kid had a blast. Like there's no practices, but they just get to play and have fun. Find what's right for you. Also, mind your child's age. Young kids should be having fun, right? If you're under 12, you should be having fun. You should be exploring and learning things. If you're over 12, see where you're at. It's okay to have fun over 12 too. But, you know, if, if you're a little bit more down the line of skill development and you're really looking for something serious, do your research. Find what you need. Um, make sure the coaching staff's there. And make sure it's not overcrowded. I've been at clinics. and talk about this. where There was way too many kids on the ice right. because they way oversold it. 
And I mean, you know, if your kid's doing one drill every five minutes, that's not good. That's not good. So there's plenty out there. Look what's up for you. Uh, also want to say, because we talked about goaltenders, we got a lot of great podcasts coming up here. We're going to have a goaltender on. We're going to be talking about uh, digital stuff on here. And, and the, 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 again, I said the why of the internet's wonderful and horrible all at the same time. A lot of guests coming up on uh, our kids play hockey. So stay tuned. And if you, if you're just listening to us for the first time, there is something here for everybody. You can go to our kids play hockey.com. Take a look at all of the different videos and podcasts that we've done. Let us know what you think by commenting or emailing us. You can email us at team at our kids play hockey.com. Pretty much our kids play hockey. If you look for it, you'll find us somewhere. And we're happy to interact with you. So that's going to do it for this episode. We hope you all enjoyed it. We hope you're going to have a great off season whenever you're listening to this, whether it's during the season, after the season, or in between. And we're going to keep going back week to week with great stuff on Our Kids Play Hockey. For Mike Benelli, Christy Casciano-Burns, I'm Leo Elias. We will see you next week. Have a great day, everybody.